Hello, it's Phil at digitaldjtips.com with the Pioneer DDJ Wego controller. This is a small plastic controller in a molded case, but it has a bit of weight. There's obviously some metal used in the construction of it. It's quite pleasing in the way it wedges upwards, and you can also get it in all kinds of colors. You can also change the colors of the jog wheel, the lights, and also you can change the color of the software that comes with it, which is Virtual DJ LE. You can change the jog wheels and the background color of that, so you can have the whole lot in any color you want um, matching. So if you're DJing a fashion show or you're otherwise that way inclined, that's something to know. I think it's a good looking little thing. It's built perfectly well. Um, even though it's only a beginner's model, it's gonna last you a long time. Unusually, there are no controls on the front or back. All the sockets are on the left and right. So on the left hand side, there is a USB socket for plugging into your computer. And there's also headphones outputs for eighth inch, i.e. MP3 player style headphone plugs, and also quarter inch, the bigger professional ones. And on this side, there's the sound output, which goes off to your speakers, and a microphone input. Microphone has its own volume, so you can talk over your music as well. So that's a little look at the controller itself, and now let's uh, take a little peek at some of the features of the controller. So here's those jog wheels. They're nice and responsive. Let's start the track playing. So the jog wheels work quite like in normal controllers, uh, other controllers, so you can slow the track down this way, speed it up this way, and you can scratch using the top of the wheel. Across the top here, we have one of the nicest bits of this controller, the effects, and they all work using the jog wheel. So here, I can snap an effect on. This one is a cut. And by using the jog wheel, I can affect how much of the effect is, is turned on. In that case, we're affecting the speed of it. Here's another one. So this is like a delay. Add another. Should an effect have more than one parameter, i.e. more than one what would normally be on a knob, you can hold down the shift button to control the second parameter. I quite like the way the effects are done there. Virtual DJ's effects aren't the best in the world, but what is there works well. This button here lets you control the key of the song, again with the jog wheel, so you can make it higher and lower without altering the speed. And this button here is a filter. Down the bottom here, we have samples. Here's some samples that are already in the program. But you can add your own. Good old virtual DJ siren. And there's also some cue points. So you can set these to various parts of the tune and it will jump to it next time when you press the button. And you can rub out your cue points again by holding shift and pressing that button there. I'll give you a quick talk through some of the other functions of the controller, although they are the most innovative functions. Everything else is pretty normal. There's an auto loop here on each side for each deck, which lets you loop a portion of the tune really easily. And then by turning the knob, once you've turned it on, you can alter how long the loop is by doubling or halving the length of it. There's headphone controls here. Master volume over here. This central section lets you browse your tunes and then load them onto a deck. You can control four decks with this because you have control over decks C and D. I'm now controlling decks C and D with the jog wheel, so that's gonna do nothing because I'm on deck C instead of the one I was on. And also you can control the speed and the volumes and the EQs of those decks. When you switch back to the other deck, there's a system for letting you take control again so that things don't go skew with. It's a bit hard to DJ with four decks on a small controller like this, but it's there if you want it. Of course there's a sync button, all controllers have a sync button on nowadays. And that's about it, everything else is pretty standard. 
Overall, this is a nice little controller. It's not the cheapest on the market. Uh, you can buy controllers with software in the box that let you do pretty much all this does for less. However, it's also well priced. Uh, and if you, if you can afford to spend a little bit more for the Pioneer unit and you like the look of it, I can thoroughly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's a little bit like one of those compact cameras. You know, that has a scene button, so you can set it to nighttime scenes, get all those trails when you're taking a picture in a club or whatever. Um, I, that's the way I see these effects. They're kind of like easy ways of having a bit of fun with your music without going into too much depth. The whole controller lets you have fun with your music without going into a massive amount of depth. And if you do want that massive amount of depth, it's probably not for you. You're probably best buying something with a few more kind of um, manual controls on it and it's laid out a bit more traditionally but you know what you can DJ on this absolutely fine you could you could DJ a party on this fine it's got everything you need the software that comes with it is nice it all looks good it all works well it's been thought through it sounds okay and for the money I think it's a good little buy uh, so there you go the Pioneer DDJ WeGo remember the full review is at digitaldjtips.com